I'm going to continue my video about steam-powered vehicles of the ancients. If you feel like you missed something, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I hope you guys can enjoy this video. Britannica says, the very first steam vehicle to carry stuff was the Stockton train that started in 1825. The first means there were none before that. Unless you believe other historians that say the first steam train to the US arrived from Britain in 1753. That's a 72 years discrepancy. And the steam train must have existed before that because the already existing parts were ordered from Britain in 1748. So, when did the first steam train operate? 1825. 1753 in the US. Before 1748 in Britain. The Wikipedia page on steam locomotives adds to the confusion by listing 1784, 1794, 1802 and 1804 as times steam locomotives were built and tried. The first steamboat was said to have floated in 1807, according to the Army Corps of Engineers. But a text originating from 1851 by Louis Figuier, a well-respected naturalist and scientist of his time, says that the first steamboat was invented by a Dennis Papin in 1705. A hundred years earlier. The Wikipedia entry on Dennis Papin asserts that the myth was refuted as early as 1880 by Ernst Gerland, though still it finds credulous expression in some contemporary scholarly work. So, scholars still believe it, but Wikipedia says it's false. The Wikipedia entry on Steamboat says. Early steamboat designs used Newcomen steam engines. Newcomen invented his engines in the early 1700s. Is that an admission that the boats existed back then? The entry also says. The era of the steamboat in the United States began in Philadelphia in 1787, when John Fitch made the first successful trial of a 45-foot steamboat on the Delaware River on 22 August 1787, in the presence of members of the United States Constitutional Convention. 1787. Didn't they say the first steamboat was presented in 1807? Here's Jonathan Hall's steamboat, said to have been invented in 1736. With this much confusion around the subject, you can be sure, you're dealing with fabricated history. The following images and texts are taken from a page on StolenHistory.org, titled Early 19th Century, Highway Steam Locomotives, Related Laws and Roads, posted by alternative history researcher, Corbin Dallas. I have omitted chunks of the article for the sake of brevity. This is an 1862 highway locomotive. Quoting from the page. I was thinking along the lines of what kind of highways they could have in 1862. Sure enough we could call some horse carriage trail a highway, but I figured I'd look for things. It is important to understand that we are not talking about railroad trains here. We are talking about regular road transportation. We are being spoon-fed this horse and oxen narrative, where only the beginning of the 20th century was the turning point when people went from horses to machines. One of the things which forced me to invest some time into this was the UK Locomotives on Highways Act of 1861. What kind of issues did they really have back then to be creating highway laws to regulate steam transportation? Sure three or five experimental machines could not prompt this. In reality, we could probably push the date to approximately 1835, for this is what we can deduce out of this 1860 pub. The 1834 Act stated. For every carriage moved or propelled or set or kept in motion by steam or machinery or any other power or agency than animal power, the toll to be two sixths per wheel for each wheel thereof. It looks like by 1860s, there could have been a well-developed network of highways throughout this world. What we can uncover is up to us, but here is something for starters. This is a 1827 Goldsworthy Gurney steam carriage. They even depicted this steam car next to the destroyed London Colosseum. 1833, Hancock's Enterprise Team Omnibus. 1833 bus, how about that? In 1829, Hancock built a small 10-seater bus, called the Infant, with which in 1831 he began a regular service between Stratford and London. It was powered by an oscillating engine carried on an outrigger behind the back axle. The boiler was vertical and made up of a series of narrow parallel water chambers. 
A fire was situated beneath the boiler, and the fire was fanned by bellows worked by the engine. There was a hopper to feed in the coke. 1833 print, showing the steam carriage designed and built by Dr. Church of Birmingham in 1832 or 1833. The carriage operated on a daily basis between Birmingham and London, at an average speed of 14 miles per hour. It had an unusual design, with three solid wheels, and could carry 44 passengers, 22 inside the carriage and 22 outside. Steam-powered coaches operated between various English towns between 1820 and 1840. The increased popularity of the rapidly expanding railway network, as well as opposition from operators of horse-drawn coaches, who physically blocked roads and persuaded the government to impose crippling tolls, was largely responsible for driving the steam coach operators out of business however. This is the three-wheeled steam coach from Dr. William Church, was used in regular passenger service between London and Brighton. This is a view in Regent's Park, 1831-1828. Steam-powered coaches, horses, tricycles, including one with body like a teapot, are speeding along or blowing up and causing traffic chaos in Regent's Park, London. Aquitant after Henry Alkin. The article also points out that steam-powered vehicles introduced in the late 1800s don't nearly look as advanced as the ones we see from the early 1800s. The writer asks what happened to 50 years of progress. The so-called Industrial Revolution which is supposed to have reached its maximum at the turn to the 1900s, appears to be a de-evolution when it comes to steam engines, the same kind of decline as we've seen in architecture over the centuries. The article asks whether the images on the works of 1800 sci-fi author Frank Reed really are science fiction. You're also familiar with this kind of 1700s flying ship. What's going on here? My guess is that history fakers forgot to remove some stuff. The Britannica and Wikipedia page on steam engines make no mention of steam cars. It doesn't fit the officially sanctioned narrative. The Wikipedia page history of the steam engine for example, doesn't even mention steam carriages. Why would they omit the most fascinating of steam vehicles? Cars were supposed to have been invented in the late 1800s. The first car I learned in school was by a guy named Benz in 1886. But that's no so. That was merely the first gasoline-based car. Why omit steam cars if we even had high-speed steam trains and steam ships in the 1920s? When confronted with these facts, they'll almost reluctantly admit that, yeah, sure, there were a couple of steam cars in the 1830s, sure, but certainly not any earlier. But even that is a lie. This is a steam fire truck, 1889. Steam scooter. Steam bicycle. A follow-up post to the article one read earlier, shows that steam cars were already around in 1803. This is Trevithick's London Steam Carriage 1803 and Merthyr Tydfil 1805. These statements are interesting. In 1801, after James Watt's earlier patent on a carriage propelled by a steam engine had expired, Richard Trevithick constructed an experimental steam-driven vehicle, Puffing Devil. Trevithick waited until it expired in 1801. Patent 913, a method of lessening the consumption of steam and steam engines, the separate condenser. The specification was accepted on 5 January 1769, enrolled on 29 April 1769, and extended to June 1800 by an Act of Parliament in 1775. I feel fortunate to have found an even earlier steam car from 1769. It's a steam wagon by Joseph Cugnet, said to have been used to haul artillery. Am I the only one who is amazed that not all vehicles were carried by horses and oxen in the 1700s? How far back do these vehicles really go? Can I find something even earlier? Yes I can. This is from an article on a man named Ferdinand Verbiest. Father Ferdinand Verbiest was a Flemish Jesuit missionary in China during the reign of the Qing dynasty. Besides his work in astronomy, Verbiest also experimented with steam. Around 1672, he designed, as a toy for the Kangxi Emperor, a steam-propelled trolley. With one filling of coal, he wrote that the vehicle was able to move more than one hour. How did this Jesuit know that steam could create a driving vehicle? This is the year 1672, that's 213 years before the first car was invented, according to mainstream indoctrination. 
Mainstream historians cannot tell you when steam engines, steamboats, steam trains or steam cars were invented. Cars, ships and airplanes were around longer than we're told. Were they only used by the ruling elite, with help from peasants? That's one possibility. Another is that our entire idea of the world pre-1800s is fabricated or distorted. While researching this article, I learned that steam-powered cars can still be purchased and legally driven today. It's always good to have alternatives to predominant systems. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this article far and wide.